Hi everyone. Thanks for following me on YouTube. One of the products that I use on a regular basis in my grove is Inococor. Inococor is a series of friendly microorganisms that help your soil in many, many different ways. I'm not going to get into that, but I particularly like this product because how easy it is to multiply, how easy it is to activate. The microorganisms are alive, but many are dormant here. What we are going to do is we're going to take one gallon of Inoku board and we're going to put it into that beer brewing uh, 16 gallon tank and we are going to make 16 gallons of very, very active microbial inoculant. One of the largest benefits I have experienced from this type of product is that the byproduct of the activation and the byproduct of these microbes hitting your soil and multiplying is that they do over a long period of time lower the pH of your soil. When I started using microbes the pH in my soil was around 7.9 now it is around 7.2 that's a substantial uh, drop in pH in a period of only three years. First step is we're going to fill this tank with uh, city water. I'm doing this in my house, not in the grove, because I want clean water. So we're going to fill this up with clean water and, and then with this pump, I'm going to, and this stone, I'm going to aerate the water for about 20 hours or so. What is that going to do for me? It's going to remove the chlorine right away and it's going to bring the oxygen level in that tank very high so when I throw in the molasses and the microbes uh, it's really going to explode and start multiplying right away. The pump is on and we are going to insert the, uh, the aerator. It's loading quite a bit. And we are just going to present this cover on top to make sure it does not get any debris or any garbage in here. Bowling really nice, a lot of bubble activity. This is going to clear the chlorine very soon. I already stopped the aeration in the tank and checked with pool chlorine testing drops and this small yard that I no longer have any chlorine here because of summertime. It took about six hours. Uh, this is very inexpensive and very easy to do. I will show you now what it looks like. Tap water with two drops of the chlorine li detection liquid uh, next to this vial that I just got out of the tank and tested it with chlorine. This thing has zero chlorine so we can move into the next step now which is to add the molasses. We are ready for the next step three quarters of a gallon of molasses raw molasses right from the sugarcane mill. We stir it well here three quarters of a gallon of molasses has been added now comes the microbes and I'm going to strain it these microbes are alive in the jar and there is usual residue they accumulate so we're simply going to open it and pour the whole gallon you could do it with a little bit less but I just right now I have enough products so I'm just going to put the whole gallon in here and we'll do this next step which will be to measure the pH of the formulation we have We now give it one good steer to mix it up. I have some more dechlorinated water and I'm going to top it up maybe another one inch. That's good. We're now going to take a little bit of uh, liquid here for a couple of reasons. We are going to uh, check the pH and we're going to put it under a microscope because I want to show you the difference of the 
before and after. Right now what I'm going to do, I want to cover it up because you want this to be closed and you don't want a lot of uh, bacteria and a lot of bad stuff to get in. So we're going to lock it up now. We put the air lock. Now and what we'll do, we'll, uh, we'll fill it in with water. Now we put some water in the airlock to the uh, spark, then we put this back on. It will let the gas escape, it will not let oxygen come in. One way to know that you have a secure airtight container is to wash the water line and pre and, or the cap and press the top and you see the air is not escaping, it's just moving the water up and down, so we do have a good airlock situation here. So that's our starting point, and we're going to check in three, four days to see how it's doing. And so I am showing you now what the brew looks like under the microscope. We will check in a few more days, probably five, six days, and once this brew is ready, I will show you again. It has been now five days since the original activation. We are going to check the pH to see how our brew is doing. We look at the airlock, it's bouncy, which means there is gas coming out, and you could see every so often a bubble still escapes uh, from the airlock. We're now measuring the pH and it's 3.59 so we are right where we want to be on the sixth day. We are ready to apply this. I have also taken a sample of the liquid that just got brewed here and I'm showing it now on the uh, microscope. And you could see from the original no activity uh, microscopic view of the original solution to the current one which is really teeming with all sorts of microbes. To save time I'm going to tell you rather than show you to make this video shorter. Once I bring the brew from home I put it in this tank with 20 gallons of water, one gallon of molasses and two additional gallons of inoku core mix it, turn the pump on, and through this hose, through this hose, it comes from the tank just before the pump and it gets distributed to the whole grove very quickly in about five minutes. There is no question in my mind that this whole process, good nutrition, good health in the soil, make the trees a lot healthier. We are suffering from lower wilt in this area. I am not saying that these microbial products are the solution, but I will show you some pictures now and you make your own conclusion. I'm showing you my neighbor to the south, my neighbor to the north, my trees are on the left, and you will see there is a big difference between their groves and my groves. So I am not sure what percentage do the microbial inoculants contribute, but definitely, definitely they make the trees healthier, and by being healthier they resist more the attacks of borers like the lower wilt vectors. I went into my accounting program last night and I took my cost of fertilizers. I averaged year 2017, current year 2016, with the two prior years most of my fertilizer already has been applied for the year. The savings from the two prior years to the current two years is $5,000 a year. I brought my cost of fertilizer down on, from $17,000 to $12,000 per year over that period of time. That's a savings of 30%. Talking about production. My highest production year in the past was 5,133 bushels. I am predicting for this year 6,200 bushels.
that is a 20% production increase. Why do I predict that? Because I have picked most of my fruit. I only have like three or 400 trees left and I already reached the 5133 that I done on my highest prior year. Earlier in the video, I mentioned the lowering of the pH. Very important, saves money. The cost of my iron chelated iron applications have gone down by about 60 pounds a year. I have cut it by 50%. At $8 a pound for the chelated iron, that's a savings of $500 and the full benefit you get from having a lower pH in some of the other micro elements that get tied up on the high pH soil. And finally, when I make extractions of my soil to put under the microscope, what I see, and I'm showing you that right now, is really amazing. All kinds of microorganisms are there, really full. What I'm showing you is max, maximized by 2000. In other words, that's just like a very small amount of liquid. And you got literally thousands of microbial helpers that are working for me while I am sleeping, while I am awake. They work for me 24 hours a day, seven days a week, helping my trees look better and get better.